What's up guys? Welcome back to Cherokee Hacks Life. So I've been doing intermittent fasting for a little bit over six months now and I've honestly seen some fantastic changes in my own body over that time frame. I've gone on a intermittent fasting caloric deficit, try to cut some fat, that worked. Went on a caloric surplus to try to build muscle, still doing intermittent fasting, that worked went on a maintenance level doing intermittent fasting and I maintained the exact same weight. I'm actually doing that right now. That worked. And I got to tell you, man, if you haven't been doing it and you haven't tried it, give it a shot. I have a bunch of videos that kind of takes you step by step over the several months on how you'll feel, what you should be doing and stuff like that. And you'll see a bunch of different videos out there. Hodge Twins have a bunch on it as well. But I wanted to go into the science behind intermittent fasting because a lot of the science isn't really talked about and you might actually read it occasionally if you actually do follow that kind of thing. I do. So one of the studies that was actually done not too, um, not that long ago and scientists on the aging related side of uh, medicine and scientists on the disease size side of medicine have been looking at in intermittent fasting and fasting in general and how it could help prevent diseases, how it could help prevent uh, aging diseases, how it could help prevent just aging in general. Now, some is positive, some is negative, but I'll give you kind of the gist of what I've actually gathered so far. So, it's been proven um, that, well, at least within mice, because this is how they accelerate things in the scientific medicine study world, is that they'll take mice, they'll give them intermittent fasting regimens, and they've actually seen that people that have done intermittent fasting have been able to delay the onset of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's significantly. Also in some instances it looks like in the lab at least with some of the some of the animals that they're using they actually lengthen the life of some animals by up to 50%. Now that's a big freaking increase in terms of fasting and increasing someone's life 50%. Now it hasn't completely translated over into primates which is humans into increasing your life 50%. That's a long fucking time to increase. Personally, I wouldn't want to live past 100. It's just too old. You can't control your body. It's just, just, it's just wrong, man. I just, I just wouldn't want to. A very long study, actually a 23-year 23, 23 long study, actually concluded that it will not increase your age or your lifespan. However, intermittent fasting over, the, over those 23 years that they looked at it actually does delay the onset of age-related diseases, such as, again, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia. And again, this goes back to what I had spoken about before. Think back on just 100, 200, 300, 500, 2,000 years ago, when food wasn't as abundant that is, as it is now, when we don't, didn't have um, entire processes involved into trying to just mass-produce chickens, meat, vegetables, you name it, it's mass produced on a level that has never been seen in human history. And back then, we didn't have that kind of luxury. You think about it, it is a luxury, especially if you're in a developed nation. It's a luxury to have that kind of thing. And back then, we didn't have that. We as humans, we would go through feast and famine every single week, every single day. You'd eat, and this is all you had to eat. And you'd have to wait till your next meal. You went out, you caught that shit, you brought it back in and you cooked it. And then you either ate or you didn't eat. Now also as part of the science is that various hormones are affected when you're actually doing intermittent fasting. Such as what's called IGF-1. And it drops early and reaches a very low level when you're doing fasting at around the third or fourth day. That's why people tend to say around the third or fourth day that they really have like no energy. They kind of feel like they're just kind of slugging it along. And then all of a sudden your body just adjusts. And then a week, two weeks later, you have so much energy because your body is just sucking up all the glycogen. So there's a doctor by the name of Valter Longo. He's a director of, long, of the Longevity Institute of the University of Southern California. He thinks that the short-term fasting maximizes the benefits of actually removing or treating cancer. He actually tested it out in mice. And over a 48-hour um, fast, it actually slowed the growth of five of the eight types of cancer inside of the mice. That's pretty damn significant. Now the science behind this is actually pretty cool. So you, if you think about a cancer cell, a cancer cell actually has a harder time actually developing than a normal cell under a fasted state. So in Britain, 
at the Britain's University of Manchester, a doctor by the name of Michelle Harvey went out and studied the insulin levels of several women that were actually had a family history of high risk in developing breast cancer. She put half of them on a diet that cut calories by about 25% and the other half on a 5-2 fast. So that's five days you eat regular, two days you eat at a very low, much lower diet which is about 600 calories for the day. After six months, both group both groups showed a reduction in blood insulin levels, but the reduction was greater with the fasting group. Now, the study is still ongoing, but they're actually looking at biopsies from each of these women, from their breast biopsies, to actually develop some sort of conclusion on whether or not the actual cancer risk actually decreased. But it's promising because it did show actually some decreases in the mice that they actually worked on. Now, let's say you're diabetic. High insulin levels are associated with type 2 diabetes. So perhaps it's no surprise that when you're fasting, it shows promise there as well. So at the Intermountain Heart Institute of Murray, Utah, a doctor by the name of Benjamin Horn found that a 24-hour water-only fast performed monthly raises your human growth hormone, which in turn triggers the breakdown of body fat to use for energy inside of your body. It reduces your insulin levels and other metabolic factors. Um, features such as your glucose level actually decreases um, and as a result people obviously lost weight because when you're intermittent fasting I'm sorry you will lose weight and it actually also reduced their risk of getting diabetes and heart disease in the people that they actually tried out this study so let's say you have asthma and you're overweight <laughs> that's apparently there was a study done on that as well in 2007 they made they conducted a study where they put 10 overweight people with asthma on alternative incomplete fast and found that those people that actually had asthma symptoms improved after just a few weeks. Now, me as a person that has asthma, I can tell you this is probably mostly your environment and where you live. Certain things will actually trigger your asthma, at least for me they do, intermittent fasting or not. But, I'm, but if this sounds like there's actually some benefits from it, it's worth a shot, man, because asthma sucks. And of course, there are studies, and I've noticed these studies before in previous videos, that people that actually go on what's considered a single meal calorie, and again, the 5-2 plan, where you eat five days, five days a week, pretty much eat whatever you want, and then two days out of those week, out of the week, you tend to kind of stagger it. So let's say Monday, Tuesday, you eat whatever you want. Wednesday, you bring it down to 600 calories only for the day. Thursday, Friday, you eat pretty much whatever the hell you want. And then um, Saturday, you go into the 600 calories again, and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you go eat whatever you want. And at least if you keep it within a the planned amount, which is about 2,500 calories for a male, 2,000 calories for a female, there's actually a study that actually notes that there's increased brain activity for the individuals that actually do this plan. They did this in mice and they did this in, uh, in several humans as well, where they put them on this, this exact same plan with 600 calories only just for the one day, continued the plan, and it actually increased neurotrophic factors inside of your brain between 50 to 400 percent. The reason for that is that fasting is actually a mild stressor and with it being a mild stressor it actually motivates the brain to do more work and become more active. But as with all different things and all different caloric deficits and any kind of, kind of workouts or anything that you do it comes down to how committed you are to actually doing it. So with all these studies they actually have an actual fail rate of between 10 to 20 percent of people that just stop doing it. So what I would say is find the plan that actually works for you. There's so many different types that you could do. Um, you could do um, the 5-2 plan that I just mentioned before. Five days you spread it out whichever five days you want and then you eat whatever you want at your caloric range which is 2,500 for males, 2,000 for um, females and then you could do 600 calories for two days out of, the, out of that seven day period. Then there's the eat fast eat diet that where basically you, um, the eat fast eat plan, you eat whatever you want or basically you eat your 2,500 calories, you don't eat the next day, you eat the 2,500 calories, you don't eat the next day. For me, that's fucking hard, man. I can't go, it's hard to go on a regular basis 24 hours without eating. Then there's the other one where, of course, you do like a one, one time a month fast, but to me that doesn't seem consistent enough. It almost seems like you'll just forget. It'll be that one day that you'll be like, oh, whoops, I forgot, can't do it no more. And then you'll just overeat the entire, the rest of the time. For me, the one that works best for me is doing a 16-6. 16, 
16 hours a day I don't eat, 6 hours a day I do eat, my energy levels increased. Definitely the first two weeks are really rough. You have to kind of plan yourself out a little bit better than you probably would average if you weren't actually planning stuff like this out. But it really isn't that bad. It really isn't. So, as always guys, comment down below, subscribe, tell me what kind of questions you have on intermittent fasting. Check out other blogs as well. Um, Hodge Twins are big on this. Um, Hodge Twins Tribute, he does this as well. Great guy too. Um, definitely check out a couple blogs that actually talk about it. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me down below. Subscribe, comment, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.